CompTIA ITF plus complete training course. Exam Objective 4.2 Given a scenario, use programming organizational techniques and interpret logic. Branching continued. In the previous video on branching, we covered if else statements. This was a perfect coding technique to use when presented with a choice that has only two possible outcomes. But what if we have three or more possible outcomes? Time to bring in the else if branch. The else if branch is a branch statement that will contain an additional condition statement. It behaves exactly as the original if branch, with one exception, the if branch condition is checked prior to any else if condition. Using flowcharts, I will illustrate this new concept. As usual, we will start at the top of our code. Next in the code, we encounter a branching statement. Our first conditional statement will be our if statement. The if statement will present a condition that needs to be checked. When the if statement's condition evaluates to true, the code will display output 1. But when the if statement's condition evaluates to false, the code moves on to the next branch. For this scenario, that would be the else if statement. And just as it sounds, else if is much like a backup plan for when plan A fails. Here your code will repeat the condition check process, but this time the check will be performed using the else if conditional statement. When the else if statement's condition evaluates to true, the code will display output 2. Now, should the if statement and the else if statements all evaluate to false, the code moves on to the else branch. This is our catch-all branch as there is no conditional statement that has to be satisfied. For this scenario, the else branch leads to output 3 being displayed. And once again, regardless of which decision is made, all branches will eventually merge back together and continue with any remaining code statements or in our case, reach the end of the program. To wrap up this video, let's take a look at another branching statement. Again, I will utilize some pseudocode and walk you through the code line by line. For this example, we will be going to the circus and we will need to determine our ticket price based on age. First up let's take an input for the age variable. Our pretend person will be 20 years old. In receiving this input, our age variable becomes equal to 20 and is stored in memory. Next we need to evaluate whether or not the conditional statement for the if branch is true or false. In this case our current age of 20 is not less than 4, so the statement is false. This causes us to skip line 3 and pushes us down to the else if branch. Now we need to evaluate whether or not the conditional statement for the else if branch is true or false. In this case our current age of 20 is not less than 18, so the statement is false. This leads us to skip line 5 and go straight to the else branch, our catch-all. Here there is no conditional statement. With no check to perform we jump right into this branch and execute the indented statement on line 7. This is an assignment statement that declares the variable price and assigns it the value shown. Once we have concluded with the branching statement, we pick up on the very next line of code and continue on. As for this last line of code, the program is directed to print or output the value currently stored within the variable price. This can be seen on the right hand side under output. Wow, you are crushing this topic. In the next video, we will take everything we have learned about coding thus far and try to solve a few practice questions. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.